Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 4Matic. And most recently here on the channel, we tested the GLE Coupe SUV, in which I called that the grand tour of SUVs. Is this EQE 500 the best electric grand tour? Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, first thing I wanna do is thank Mercedes-Benz for delivering this one to us to test for a full week here on the channel. Huge thanks to them. And normally this is the part of the review where I pull in close and show you exactly what is under the hood. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I can't here in this Mercedes-Benz EQE because much like the EQS sedan and SUV, this thing was designed for supreme aerodynamics and to that end well they don't want consumers opening the hood the hood can be opened just not by the end consumer there are a lot of uh, red tape and physical limitations keeping the end consumer from doing that so can't get under there myself but i can tell you that this 500 formatic does have dual motor electric drive all-wheel drive and is attached to a 90.6 kilowatt hour battery all that is good for 402 horsepower and 633 pound-feet of torque so this is the most performance oriented non-amg version you can get an eqe amg it's just a little more torquey and a little quicker off the line this one is estimated at a four and a half second zero to 60 time, which is on par with the Nissan Z we recently tested, but it can do it repetitively and very easily because of that formatic all wheel drive and it's electric uh, instantaneous torque. But let's talk a little bit about the design of this thing. Mercedes-Benz with their EQ line of vehicles outside of the EQB, are really kind of a nesting doll style approach. They all look very similar because they are all sculpted by the wind. So this looks like a smaller version of the EQS. And much like the EQS, they also offer an SUV version of this, which kind of gets into the muddy waters of naming and how confusing the EQ prefix is when you tie it to their SUV lines because this is the E-Class of their sedans, so it makes sense, EQE, but you can't call a GLE an EQGLE, so they call the SUV version the EQE SUV. Anyway, gets very confusing, but up front here, we have full LED lights, LED fog lights, LED running lights, LED turn signals, and uh, very aerodynamic design on this one. It kind of gives it a very jelly bean alike look overall but I can tell you we have driven this one over 300 miles we took it to Dallas and back and because of its aerodynamic profile you can hardly tell there is one big bit of bug gut up there but other than that everything just kind of slides over it so I was actually impressed uh, when I looked at this after our road trip to Dallas and back just how few bugs were on the front of it because it is just so slippery slippery and cuts through the air so well moving around to the side you can see what I mean about the similarity in design to the EQS lift back this one is a proper sedan so it does get an actual trunk coming up front here we get the amg line wheels and you can tell yes they're aerodynamic in nature you've got that kind of uh, mesh looking pattern coming out of the five spoke uh, amg design love it or hate it, uh, it they are efficient because we have seen over 300 miles of estimated range on this one we're not seeing that now, we're seeing very high 200s from that 90.6 kilowatt hour battery. But these uh, wheels are wrapped in Bridgestone 25540 R20 inch uh, rubber. I'm trying to find the model name of these Taranza tires. So Bridgestone Taranza. And then, yes, we can come out and look at that one bow design. Again, very aerodynamic overall, this thing. Very, is very slippery and cuts through the air. You may be thinking this is the charge port up front, but no, because you cannot 
actually open the hood as a consumer. This is where you put your wiper fluid. So yeah, that's how you access that right there. The charge port is actually on the back side on the uh, passenger side, which works very well for this video sponsor, Electron EV Chargers. We cannot review electric vehicles without being able to charge them. And this 48 amp V-Box unit absolutely makes that possible for us here on the channel. You can see it is mounted here, comes with a 20 foot cable and also a place to hang it when it is not currently charging a vehicle and allows us to drive things like this 2023 Mercedes EQE and 2023 Lexus RZ. And the J1772 plug makes it really simple to plug in and go. You can find out more about them by visiting the link down in the description below or going to gtgaragetalk.com slash gear. All right, outside of the one bow design of this, coming around to the back is where it differentiates itself from the EQS on which it shares a lot of design. And I really like the back end of the EQE just a little bit better. You get this very sporty looking tight rear window. The viewing angle out of the back is about the same as the very large lift back on the EQS, but it just gives it a very coupe-like look from the back back here. Otherwise, the design of this is very similar uh, to the EQS. Again, it cuts through the wind. You get that EQE name back here, about the only way you can really tell, other than it being a little bit smaller and that tight rear window, that it's different than the EQS. Formatic shows you that it is a dual motor, all wheel drive, and then much like many Benz products, push in on the logo there to open the power trunk. Yes, power trunk, not lift back. And you can see we get decent storage back here. I've got my backpack for reference sake. This is the Mercedes Benz charger right there. And then we do have a false load floor here with no spare tire, but it looks like a uh, fix a flat kit right there. And then if you look back here, we actually have a 40-20-40 split bench rear seat that does power deploy from the trunk right here. So if I push this button right here, it releases it, but let's see, I'm gonna have to come in here and push it. So a mostly flat load floor all the way across. And yes, that 20% does go with the driver's side, but can be deployed independently of it. So you can get some long items through the trunk if you need it. It is also a power closed trunk. So push the button right there, brings it to a close. All right, before we get inside this one, I do want to show you the Mercedes-Benz key. It is typical of all their EQ products. Very nice, very upscale. It's metallic. It's got some nice weight and heft to it. And you can see you can deploy the physical key from the backside, but you get lock, unlock, and your trunk release from here. I do believe you have to have the app to remote start this vehicle, but otherwise you can keep this key in your pocket and just walk up to the vehicle. It is a proximity key, so no need to worry about anything. You can lock it by pushing that button right there and the door handles retract into the body side, making it very difficult for anyone to get in. To deploy these, you can do it from any of the four doors. You could just push on the handle itself or hit the unlock on the key and they will pop out. But I just wanna show you again that hides them push on the door handle and they pop out and then you can open the door just like that but i want to close it one more time to show you one of my uh, least favorite things about this i've noticed a few build quality issues with this eqe and i would be remiss if i didn't show you the first of which are the windows here they are a frameless design which means this window needs to go down just a little bit before the door is open but it's almost like it's not quick enough and it gets stuck right here every time i do it so ready three two, one. See, it just kind of drags on the body side just a little bit before it comes open. And then uh, I'll show you here in a little bit because the vehicle's not actually on. I'll roll it down and it doesn't roll down all the way. It's just so close to doing it. So they are automatic all the way around, but you can see this one just sticks up ever so slightly here on the side of the vehicle. So in addition to them being frameless and catching just a little bit on the top, uh, we also get just a little bit of glass poking over the top right here. That's the best angle to show you exactly how much glass sticks out. Interesting design choice here on the EQE. Small nitpicks in this one, for real. 
We do get this kind of chocolate brown and cream contrasting interior. I, I like it, but uh, given the other press vehicle we have at this moment with the blue suede interior on the Lexus RZ, uh, I, this one is just well, it's brown, and I, I like the differentiation. I like that it's not all black, but we'll start over here on the door and work our way in. We do get this rose gold accent that we've had in all EQ products that goes across the entire dash, and it also, right above it, that is your ambient lighting, which I love Mercedes-Benz ambient lighting. Uh, you can customize it, you can make it move and dance and do all kinds of things. And then you do get the stitching here, lock, unlock, all your uh, controls here. Three person memory, ours does have heat and ventilation, which never knew I needed this, but you can do simultaneously here in Mercedes-Benz products. I guess in my old age, I really like the heat to soothe my back and the ventilation to keep me cool. We do have metallic door pulls right here that get very hot in a Texas summer and hit you right on the knee if you drive anything like I do. That is not my favorite, but again, small nitpicks here. We do have automatic windows all the way around there, your mirror controls, and you get a hatch or a trunk release down there. We do have the Burmester sound system, so we get those grills right there. And let's hop in and turn this thing on because we're flirting with triple digit speed today. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, push the engine start button, and the vehicle comes to life. My seat gets into a comfortable place, and I'm gonna turn the wheel where we have a little bit more comfort, and whew, turn that climate on. So dedicated climate menu over here, turn it on. I just don't want it blaring, so we'll turn it down just a little bit. But you may hear that this vehicle is actually humming right now. And a lot has been made of the fact that Dodge's first EV and the new Hyundai Ioniq 5N can be revved. Well, so can this EQE. So I'm stopped, I'm in park, and let's give it a, a rev or two. So yeah. Another thing I wanted to show you is the different sounds that this can make. So you go into settings here, and then you can go into vehicle, and you can go into sound experience, and you have silver waves. Vivid Flux. Very space age. And where I had it, Roaring Pulse. And you can see you can actually turn it on and off both inside and out. So people outside can also hear you rev your EV. So yes, it does actually make noises when you push the accelerator, can't call it the gas. We'll get more into that here in a little bit, but I do wanna take you again across the front. So over here we have our lighting controls, these turbine style AC vents that I like very nicely. Continuation of that rolls go rose gold and ambient lighting. 12.3 digital gauge cluster, very similar to all other Mercedes products we've tested here on the channel, so I won't go into detail there. And then much like the S-Class that we've tested and a few other EQ products, a uh, large kind of, hmm, I don't want to say tablet style because it's more TV style, the aspect ratio on it, uh, infotainment with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We get this faux wood look up here. No hyper screen in this model. We really like that in the EQS that we had. And then you always have your dedicated home buttons down here at the bottom from your climate menu, which you saw me access. This actually does have four zone climate control. So I like that a whole lot. And you can do a lot of different things. Anyway, dual zone up front, dual zone in the back. And this actually has an ionization uh, mode in it that monitors the air quality both inside and out. So I like all that fairly well. It's fairly snappy. This is what I don't like down here. This entire thing is very much like a button. This is a standalone button, but here are your dynamic drive modes. So you get eco, custom, uh, or comfort, sorry, sport, an individual, and you can see that changes everything from your engine sound, quote unquote, your driving, and your uh, dynamic 
uh, adaptive uh, dampers on this one. You also get a camera button here with 360 camera. I heard the camera in the back pops out from that Mercedes logo, but you can actually pan around and see what it looks like all around you uh, in this vehicle. I like that a lot. Uh, some premium manufacturers are making that a really nice feature all the way around. You can get it to automatically come on when it realizes you're close to something. And you can also set a GPS location. So anytime you get to a tricky spot, it just comes on automatically. There's some parking assistance functions on this one as well, but we haven't messed with that too much in our time with this one. Uh, you have a quick access to all of your typically used features here. So your steering assist and, and things like that, car wash mode, and you can pan through uh, all of that right here. It is fairly quick and easy, but you can see all the stuff on your quick access menu. EQ is all the electric stuff uh, that you would need to monitor on this one, including your percentage, your range, and your consumption, like I said. Uh, we took this one to Dallas and back. We did stop to charge it at Electrify America station and we were just eight minutes away from the 80% mark where it kind of trickles to a slow charge uh, just from a quick run in to use the restroom at Walmart and back. So really do like the charging on this one. And then back to our home screen, back to our home screen and you can see the Mercedes home screen is your uh, GPS, but you can also go into your EQ functions right there. You can go into your uh, navigation functions or directly to looking at all the chargers near you right there. So I like that a whole lot. And then you can go into Apple CarPlay through there. And yes, gotta love some BGs. Anyway, coming down here, we have a power button and then a slider that you can also tick one by one. I just want a knob, but this is too much. Uh, we do get some gloss black plastic, not a huge fan of it. And it does kind of creak when you push it, but it does have this sliding port right here where you can have your phone wirelessly charging up here. Uh, you can put your key here. You can use one of these two USB-C ports. You also have these deployable cup holders that can be completely removed. So if you want more storage in here, you can get it and then you can hide it all. Speaking of storage, we do have this open storage spot underneath uh, the center uh, console, I guess, and you can store a lot of stuff down there. Really like that. You do have this split opening center console. Again, two USB-C ports in here. This is actually where I've got the hard plastic covers uh, for the child seat back there, and it is nicely padded. We've got some faux stitching on here, or is that real stitching? We'll see. Uh, but very nice. These seats, again, chocolate brown, multi-positional, three-way memory on both the driver and front passenger. And they have been very comfortable on our trip uh, to Dallas and back. And no complaints here. They don't massage, but they do have the driver fatigue uh, kinetics on it so help mitigate uh, fatigue on long trips where the seat just kind of keeps moving on you ever so slightly to keep you from getting too stiff. Coming around to me I've got a good amount of headroom and can find the ultimate perfect driving position with power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. I like that. Uh, all around I've been very comfortable up here. We do have the uh, dual panel glass roof in this one. So it does cut into my headroom just a little bit. And I'll show you, there's actually a slider to open the shade right here, which there are dual rollers that open simultaneously uh, to expose the glass roof up here. And then you slide it again to get that glass roof to open. It is a rather large pane of glass up above me. Gives me a nice open air experience up above me. One of my other critiques of the build quality of this one is here recently, that's kind of been creaking on me a little lately, which kind of surprises me here in a Mercedes-Benz product, but it's enough of the front seat. Let's check out that back seat. All right, coming up to the back seat, much like the front, pop out door handles, and chocolate brown interior. Again, back here, very similar to the front. We get our seat controls, just heated outboard seats on this one, and then the metallic door pulls, but we'll go ahead and pop in and sit down in this one. I do like 
how unlike the EQS SUV we tested, we actually get chocolate floor mats here on the cream colored floor. Uh, we got the cream colored floor mats on our EQS SUV dirty within hours of getting it. Not so much a fan of that, but you can see sitting behind myself at 510, I've got plenty of room. We have matte pockets on the backs of both front seats. It is hard, but has a little bit of give to it on the back of the seat. So very comfortable back here. And I did mention quad zone uh, air conditioning. So I've got all my controls back here with the vents only located on the back of the center console here. Down below, we've got two more USB-C ports uh, for additional power back here and then we have tucker's car seat in place if you want to see what it's like to install this go and hit that subscribe button so you can see our family review when it drops later this week we do have a pull down center armrest with hidden cup holders you push once I'm not quite sure what that's for but push it again and it deploys your uh, rear seat cup holders and then as i showed you earlier this 20 percent section actually does fold down independently of where i'm sitting so you can pass them along items through if you needed to like skis or things like that seating position back here is very nice i've got a decent amount of headroom but thank goodness uh, this glass portion is open with the roller shade I might need to scoot down a little bit more if it wasn't uh, there is a nice slope down to the back of the uh, seat bottom here. Gives you a nice kind of reclined seating position. You can see my knees are raised a little bit. My aunt rode back here on the two hour trip to and from uh, Dallas and she said it was supremely comfortable. So I, I'll just take her word on that one. But let's see what this thing drives like. All right, getting in to the EQE 500. To put it into drive, you pull down right there. And I will go ahead and talk about, while I'm in this parking lot, the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. So no, there are no gears in this to go through. There's no uh, shifting that needs to take place. Those are for the amount of engine or power recuperation for the 90.6 uh, kilowatt hour battery. It starts up in normal, but you can do strong or no. Or what I like to do, you hold it and it does intelligent recuperation which that monitors uh, the traffic around you and kind of brakes for you as you will, but I'm off the gas right now or off the accelerator. You can see it just coasts. So again, it uses the uh, radar adaptive cruise control to kind of monitor the situation around you. Put it in a full stop right here and rev up that engine and let go. Oh my goodness. And that was in comfort mode. That thing was that fast, but we're gonna go ahead and put it into sport and we're gonna give it one more go uh, as we come to a nice slow and easy stop here. So full stop, foot all the way down, floor it and go! Oh! oh my goodness! And 60. So the head up display, which is eight inches wide and very massive in this, overall could not even keep up with the acceleration on this one i saw many numbers skipped up there ahead of me and just oh my goodness you feel it in your gut so the thing about electric vehicles and their acceleration they are just so much it's a different experience even though the numbers say it is much like that nissan z we recently tested here in this, it's just push it and go, and it's a constant. There's no acceleration uh, change, rate of acceleration change. It's just you go, and it is very impressive uh, here in the EQE 500. So I mentioned in the intro, is this the grand, best Grand Touring electric? I have tested the Lucid Air Grand Touring, and that thing stickers for a whole lot more than this. It's already in the triple digits. This one is flirting with triple digits at 99 as this one is equipped. You can get the AMG version starting at about 106, which gives you even quicker acceleration than this one. But 
This one really is a good overall package. I keep referencing our family trip to Dallas and back. Between the over 300 miles of range, the DC fast charging in this, the four zone climate control, the four wheel, four wheel steering, that one's hard to say, that I didn't even mention when we were outside. This thing is a blast to drive on curvy back roads like this or on long haul trips like that. This thing really is a good all around vehicle. In fact, that four wheel steering kind of messes with your brain a little bit because at low speeds, those back wheels turn up to 10 degrees in the opposite direction of the front wheels kind of making it feel like you're pivoting around the center of the vehicle. It, it's a really trippy experience. Makes you feel like you're in something much smaller than you really are. At highway speeds, they actually turn up to 10 degrees in the same direction as the front wheels, kind of giving you a crab walk like feature going from one lane to another. You almost glide into the other lane. So again, for grand touring nature, take this on a long trip it's actually very comfortable, very fun. I'm in sport mode right now, but we've spent a majority of our time driving around in comfort in this, and it is supremely comfortable, and this thing just eats up the miles. So it has been a great family vehicle, a great vehicle to take on a long trip, and uh, getting out here to these curvy East Texas back roads, definitely a fun vehicle to rip when the time is necessary oh my goodness this thing is so quick and it will take the corners at ease again thanks to that four wheel steering you might have heard that rough pavement back there again being in sport mode let's see what these bumps do yeah you can definitely feel that it's stiffer but we can simply go back in here and go to comfort and that loosens everything up a little and gives you more of that grand touring vibe uh, that we're going for here in the EQE. Oh my goodness, setting out at speed. This thing is very planted and very comfortable. Uh, it's almost deceptively quick how fast it goes because it, it does get so silent on highway roads at highway speeds. I'm on a highly textured pavement here and the Benz is doing a very good job of insulating me from the textured road noise outside and it is really a quiet calm cabin um, outside of your sound experience that you can turn on or turn off accordingly here in the EQE. You saw back there I am in comfort mode. Woo! and took that corner a little bit faster than perhaps the current suspension was prepared to do. Uh, but yeah, it is still a fun grand tour all the way around. Puts a smile on your face, especially when you push the giggle pedal up that accelerator. My goodness, it is so fast, instantaneously fast, and it brings a smile to my face each and every time. The deer are out today, so I am going to be a little extra cautious carving these back roads because while we did not kill a lot of bugs with this aerodynamic shape on our trip, I don't think a deer will just fly up and over this without doing any damage uh, to the EQE's exterior. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This thing is fun on curvy roads. Uh, <laughs> that instantaneous torque just pulls you out of corners like a dream. It is so much fun to pilot around and enjoy a fun East Texas back road. <laughs> and aside from the synthetic noise that's being pumped in, and the road noise that is creeping through. It's just a surreal experience when I'm used to powering big loud V8 vehicles back around these roads. Most recently, that Ford F-150 Raptor R. All right, we're getting to one last straightaway. I've got to do it one more time. So we come to a complete stop right here. I'm not even going to brake torque it. I'm just going to come to a stop and go! I Goodness, this thing is quick. <laughs> this thing is fun and fast. If you want to see more from us, that family review I mentioned earlier, 
be sure and hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell so you tell the algorithm uh, to show you more content from us. Like, comment, and subscribe down below. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, or whatever it's called now, Threads, YouTube, everything is at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com where you can read more about maybe some of the things I couldn't think of off the top of my head while doing things like that. But as for me, behind the wheel of the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 4MATIC, until next time, gearheads, bye.